Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now this is Sapili. Uh, as you can see, I've got a fair amount of it and this is just a fraction of what I've got. Uh, I've had it for quite a while. I've used a few pieces already in other projects, but today we're gonna to make something purely of this and a bit of resin as well. Uh, I haven't quite figured out exactly how I'm gonna do what I need to do, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna be able to sort it out. Let's get started. Okay, so we've got the sapili, and then we are now going to make a maze. Uh, the maze is going to be formed from the sapili strips, uh, and then we're going to fill the gaps in between with resin and turn it into a, a nice shallow bowl, which is going to be ideal for putting things in or just playing around with. Uh, the maze does work. I have checked it two or three or four or five or six times. Uh, so let's get started. Now, the initial design came from a series of squares, uh, which I then cut areas out to create the maze pattern. So the first step is to make the five squares out of sapili. When they're all glued up and dried, we're going to cut out these areas for the gaps, glue it to a board, and then place in the spacers which will block off certain areas. Now, I have one problem to face, uh, which is I am shocking at measuring. Now, I've created a, uh, a cut sheet, so I think it's best to have a go first. We'll make the, the outside perimeter, which isn't gonna have any cutouts. We'll get that glued up and see how it goes. Now, the outside perimeter is made up from four 200 millimeter lengths. Now I have two options here. I either glue them butt to butt like that, which for my skill level is probably the easier way, or I can take them to the bandsaw, cut a 45 degree angle and join them that way. Uh, and that's what I'm gonna try first. So let's get started. I've got the four pieces all cut. I've just put some sandpaper over the edges just to clean them up. And what I'm gonna be doing is taping them, or add, adding tape to the back so I can glue this joint and then fold it and it'll keep it hopefully in place. glue on these joints. There we have it. Our first square. All right, we'll let this dry for a while. And while that's doing that, I shall make up the rest. I'm going to be gluing the rest with CA glue as opposed to uh, wood glue. Uh, the reason why I've used wood glue on the outside is because I want this to try and be as waterproof a joint as possible because it's going to try and keep resin out. Stage one done. And looking at some of these joints, I think my application to the Cabinet Makers Guild best not be put in quite yet. Okay, while these lots are setting, I will quickly jump onto the laser engraver and cut myself out a nice template ready to attach these two. Okay, there's our template that we've cut out and engraved on the laser. Now, all these lines correspond to each area of the maze. Now the next step we need to do is to cut out the areas as on the map. So we'll start with the smallest one first, which is this one. 
and that needs to cut out in this area. I'm just going to use a piece of the original Sapili. Right, so that's going to be cut out. There's one. Second one. These joints are terrible. <laughs> right, second one's there. going better than I'd hoped. Right, so what I'm going to do now is glue all these pieces in and then that sets I can start putting the spaces between. The centre ones I'm going to uh, attach with CA glue, the very outer rim I'm going to put in with wood glue. We are there. Right, I'm going to quickly let this... Oh no, one more thing to do. Okay, last thing we need to do. Every good maze needs a start point and an ending point. Now we obviously know the ending point. We've been there. And I've got... Every time I uh, do some resin work, any resin that's left over, I pour into numerous types of little moulds. Subsequently, I've got an awful lot of little off cats, off, off casts, and things which I can use to uh, decorate items. So these are going to be our start and end points. Go. Right, I'll let everything cure for a good while and then we shall fill it full of resin. Okay, our maze is nicely cocooned inside of this mould I've made for it. Uh, hopefully there'll be no leaking this time. I'm not going to stake my life on it, but I am fairly confident. So I'll get that out of the way for a second and start thinking about making up some resin. Now I did some calculations and it needs about a litre to fill the maze. Now we're not going to do just a litre, just in case uh, of any mishaps or miscalculations. So I'm going to make uh, two lots of 600 mil. So that gives 1.2 litres in total. The, the, the initial litre total uh, I used was very much on the uh, pessimistic side. So it's probably more like 800 mil. So I'm fairly confident that if I make 1200 up, we're going to be okay. So in each of these pots, we're going to do two lots of 600. Uh, we're using the Let's Resin deep pour resin as usual, which is one part, sorry, which is two parts part A to one part of part B. So initially I'm going to be pouring two lots of 400 mil and then topping each one to 600 with the part B. Right, first thing we'll do is give these two a good mix. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay, now what I'm dying to do is to do a simultaneous pour with two different colours into a maze to see how it fills everything up. Now, obviously the, the colour that we pour into it is going to kind of show you the way around the maze. So that's generally not a great idea, but I really want to do it, so I'm going to do it. Okay, so we're going to mix two different colours up, both distinctively different. Just a few drops of black in that one, just as a base. And purple, sorry, uh, violet in this one, I get, just as a base. Gold. Grey. Green. The teal. Hydro colour. This is the, the colour changing effect type. And this one, equally a mad selection. A little bit of cyan. Orchid. Blue. And a golden chameleon powder. Right. I don't know how these are going to turn out, but this is a fun project, so let's have fun. Not quite as subtly different as I would have hoped, but we learn something for next time. I'm sure they're going to look an awful lot better when they're actually in the piece as well. So that one's definitely a few magnitudes lighter, which is good. Okay, right, we want separation to exist when it's in the mould, so we're going to let these sit for 60-70 minutes before we start to pour. Are you ready? I right, added, added a bit more colour to one of them to hopefully make them a little bit more distinctive. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. That is so unusual. Okay, I'll let this sit for a little while. I'll come back in and check the levels. And after that, I'll get it in the pressure pot. Right, there we go. We're at the pressure pot. Now, we did have a slight issue where it's obviously not being sat completely flat. And a bit of the resin has kind of flowed to this area, so it is going to have to go a little down a little bit. But that's fine, I was planning to take it down a fraction anyway. So let's start off by getting it out of this mould and getting it on the lathe. It's the easiest demold I've ever had. Okay, I'm going to be mounting this between centres initially. So I just need to mark out the exact centre on both sides, just so I can get it nice and square. Okay, let's get this on the lathe. Okay, I've got it between centres, and it's as close as I think we're going to get it in terms of squareness. So we'll tighten this up, we'll lock it down, and I'm going to sharpen up. Okay, we're all sharpened up. Initially, we're going to be turning at about 650 RPM. First order, order of business is to remove this plywood from the base and create a tenon on the bottom.
Okay, so we've got all the plywood, or the vast majority of the plywood of the base, so I'm just going to mark up for the tenon. Doesn't need to be overly deep, the tenon, just two or three millimeters should be fine. the tenon in place. Now we've got a fair bit of chattering on the edge of the resin from the uh, bowl gouge. So I'm just going to come across with uh, a carbide, see if I can smooth this out a little bit before we go to the next stage. carbide certainly seems to have sorted out the base pretty well. We have created a slight curve up from the edges here, uh, although it is going to sit fairly flat on the base. Just those lifting of those edges is just going to give it a little bit more visual appeal. We have unfortunately lost a little bit of the sapele there, but I'll just sand that back and put a kind of a, a curved edge around here so it all matches in. Right, I'm going to quickly sand the base. I'm not bothered filming the sanding of the base uh, because there'll be plenty more sanding later on. Okay the back is sanded and abrasive paste on it. I'm not going to do any more than that because it'll still need some work doing after we take the tenon off. Uh, now is the job to start getting this top level. We've just got this dip to overcome and then start creating a small bowl. It's not going to be overly deep, just a nice gradual uh, gradient. Uh, I've sharpened up, I'm using the face mask and face shield and we shall start. Turning now at about 950 RPM. Need to overcome all the problems that we had from the casting and start making this a little bit more pronounced now. Uh, the tailstock won't be in there for very long so we'll need it away fairly soon. But uh, good start, good, good start.
trying to decide, is that enough of a curve? Or do I need to do it a little bit more? Tell you what, I'll take the tail stuck away, get rid of this middle bit and we'll reevaluate. depth of that. It's not too accentuated. You can still see exactly what we're trying to achieve with the pattern uh, and it's still going to be useful. Throw your keys on it, throw your change on it, put your watch on it, your phone. That'll be fine. Right, we get a scraper, see how that does on finishing off the resin. If that doesn't work then I'll go back in with the carbide to sort it out. set up for sanding. I will let you watch it this time, not all of it, then I'll bring you back when it's all done. Sunday went well. It's hard work today. It's one of the hottest days of the year so far. And it's roasting in here. So I'm just going to wipe off any excess dust of isopropyl. Give you the first impression of how this is going to look when it's finished. Okay, now I'll just let that evaporate. Okay, I'm going to go on with an abrasive paste now. This is again one of the experimental ones that we've been trying out. Now because this is a, a winged bowl, or a square bowl as it were, normally you would buff this in with it spinning, but of course you're gonna, only going to get the inside. So initially I'm going to polish or cut back the centre areas and then I'm going to stop it, lock off the tailstock and then work on the corners with a drill and a pad. And then I'll do the same to the outside as well. Okay, just lock off those areas. Just put a little bit more paste on the corners. Do the same to the sides. Then once again, wipe off any residue of isopropyl alcohol. Then we can go on with a final polish. Okay, I'm going to apply a polish in exactly the same way as I did the abrasive paste. Put it into the center. Use the drill to get the edges. Right, I'll let you watch the buffing in the center and then he'll bring you back and we'll take a look at what we've done.
Okay, let's take a look at what we've done. There we go, all finished. I've had this Sapili for quite a long time and I've been always looking into different projects that I can make with it that will be interesting and a little bit unusual. My workmanship certainly needs improvement with these joints. And quite ironically, a tool has arrived today, which would have helped me an awful lot, but uh, it's a bit late now. But you never know, in the future, I may have another go at something similar. The resin worked pretty well. I'm not sure if it's picking up very well in this light, but the light for the two colours has very much stayed to the outside and the darker reddy area, as kind of you can see it run into the middle, which really is quite appealing. It's predominantly red on the other side as well. So that might have been just a little bit heavier a mix. So it's kind of settled to two different levels. Very hard to tell exactly what's going on. If you fancy having a go, I'll, I'll put a couple of shots at the end from this side and of course the reverse and time yourself and see how long it will take you to solve the maze. Uh, my daughter's just done this side in three seconds and she did that side in five seconds. So that's your target to beat. Let me know in the comments how you got on. If you have enjoyed this video, then I'd really appreciate a, a like and subscribe and all those kind of things. Uh, and if you could leave a comment as well, then you are going to be entered into the giveaway, which is next week. That's right. The giveaway ball will be made next week. If you fancy trying something like this yourself or a different resin project, then I can certainly recommend the Let's Resin uh, range of products. There are links and discount codes in the description to this video. And remember that if you do use my links, then you are helping out the channel as well. But anyway. That's it for now. Thank you very much indeed for watching and I shall see you all next week. Thank you.